two of the most important Ice Age settlements in Europe. They were first discovered in the 1920s, but their significance has only recently been appreciated. What's important about these Moravian sites, what makes them far more than just another site, is that they give us very early signs of people settling permanently. These uh, places were settlements. They weren't just temporary camps used once and then people were off and never to return. We have some evidence that uh, mammoth bones were actually stuck together with wet clay, which may suggest the kind of, that they were kind of bricks, if you want, for, for the people of the time. So the people were building something there in, that they wanted to come back to. This was an investment they were making in the same way that a homeowner today invests in what they consider to be their permanent home. There is also evidence of hearths and, and the fact that people were reusing hearths in the same area. And this was not just uh, a group of fly-by nights, they were digging in. Other finds at Dolni Vestonice have confirmed the existence of a society more advanced than any other at the time. What has been found in the Moravian sites is the earliest evidence from anywhere in the world for uh, ceramic technology. Not in the form of pottery, but in the form of art, uh, making figurines that have been fired. And this suggests that people had time. Because if you're traveling less, then you have more time to develop and refine your artistic systems. Some people even describe Dona Vestanitsa as the New York of the Ice Age, simply because it's the cutting edge of settled life at the time. Sicidian. Bran has been brought before the chief and elders of the community. Merg. In his clan, Merg he was a chief yet. himself. Here, he's just a refugee, Lydia. asking for help. Glarian. There's no and reason Kibiti. to expect any better treatment from Kibiti. these people than from the clans of the aggregation Glarian. or the hunters who chase the travelers Beris. off their territory. And without a common language, it's almost impossible for Braun to argue why he and the others should be allowed to stay. But there's something different about this community, as Mara and Aki are finding out. Aki has been delivered into the care of the medicine woman. She's also the spiritual leader of the community. She's going to such lengths to help a stranger because these are people with a totally new approach to outsiders. Facing a hostile climate, they believe their chances of survival are improved by increasing numbers, not restricting them. The size of the community varies throughout the year, but at peak times there are over a hundred people living here, well beyond the normal limit of 30 for a hunter-gatherer group. Strangers are seen as a potential asset rather than a threat.
Edi. He's guy, man. It's a king gun. Aki has the recovered. Guys. He and Braun are learning that this settlement isn't just larger than anything they've known before. There's also something different about the way the people here organize their work. In Aki and Braun's hunter-gatherer clan, everyone had a hand in almost every activity. Here, people seem to have been allocated specific tasks. As different tasks are divided up among different people, experts have emerged, individuals with specific skills. They have become much more efficient at what they do. Each year, they are able to make improvements. Tools get sharper, clothes warmer, and huts stronger. They can cope with the deteriorating climate and grow in numbers. And a culture of specialists has started to take root. Within the archaeological record of the Stone Age, it is possible to see a distinct change in the sort of spearheads that were being made in Europe around 24,000 years ago. They are becoming much more elaborate and standardized, as if they were crafted by experts, people dedicated to the task of tool making. It's amazing to think that this stone spear tip is 24,000 years old. Somebody sat under a rock shelter such as this and thought very carefully about how to make it. It's made on a very thin blade, very long elongated flake, which is very difficult to remove from a core of flint. And then it's received very careful regularization. The skill required to make something like this indicates that a degree of specialism had emerged. In other words, there were individuals whose skills were to make stone tools. And before this time, the stone tools are very generalized. They're the sort of things that could have been made by many people. So really, tools like this, the gravette point, mark uh, a revolution that had occurred in society about this time. In France, some enthusiasts still make spearheads as they would have been made in Ice Age Europe. They can reproduce the same technical quality, but only after years of practice. Some of the blades are as sharp as a modern surgeon's scalpel. It's an advantage to specialize because specialization uh, allows the minimization of effort and the maximization of gain. It makes perfect sense to pool expertise, to pool resources. It doesn't make sense for all individuals to do the same thing every day. <laughs> Can we stop now? I've already cut myself twice. Well, it may be very obvious to us that society is specialised because we are a very specialised society, but this is the period in which this specialisation is emerging. Aki and Braun have no specialist skills to offer to this community. They've been assigned to a production line systematically scavenging a mammoth which has died near the settlement. The hide will be used for warmth, the bones for building, and the flesh for meat. In time, Aki and Braun will be expected to learn a craft, but for now, they're fit only for general laboring work. While the men are scavenging, Mara is out hunting. Although she's pregnant, she's still expected to work as a beater 
flushing out animals. The image of prehistoric man, the great hunter, is misleading. Once our ancestors began hunting with nets, women were just as likely to be the providers of meat as men. But women could only go hunting if others looked after their children. Archaeologists call this the grandparent revolution. Any community looking to increase the efficiency of its workforce needs to have specialists caring for its children. Aki and Braun have spent their adult years providing for their women and children. Now, the women are providing for them. Mara is finding it much easier to adjust. Nefni. If they're going to stay in this settlement, they'll all have to come to terms with this new way of life. The first storm of the winter has arrived in Moravia. It's only October, but it's already 20 below. Hunting's impossible in these conditions, so the community draws on its stockpiles of food. They have freezer pits full of meat which was stored earlier in the year. But good planning doesn't solve all their problems. People are being forced to spend long periods of time in confined spaces. Inevitably, tensions surface. Enter Accra to ping it contact con. A ping to fun. Kiliti. Ving in anger. Zuni tan ziking then. Even though there's enough food to go around, there's still resentment of Braun and Aki, unskilled outsiders enjoying the fruits of the community's labors. Large societies need ways of diffusing tension. Anthropologists believe that that's the function of a ritual to remind people of their shared beliefs. Within this community, every adult's face is tattooed. The markings are a permanent badge of identity. If the newcomers want to be accepted as equals, they'll also need tattoos. 